Welcome to Rimac Automobili. The last 10 years have been an epic journey, from a garage to over 500 people today. And the best way to share our story for us is always to show our facilities to our guests, customers, investors and friends. So what we wanted to show you as well is to give you an opportunity to see it for yourself. So in April 2011, we moved from my garage to the first facility. Uh, at that time, the first three employees joined me, and that's why I consider the beginning of the company. Before that, was just me in a garage. So the last eight years, we are officially a company, and the first facility, we have built this car. First Concept One prototype. Then, in 2012, we moved to this location when we were less than 10 people. And now in the same location, we are over 500. So I want to show you what this looks like now, and I want to capture this moment. The company is changing so many times, and it changes its layout, the way we do things. So whenever our customers or visitors come back after a few months, they are surprised by how much the place has changed. We are now in a big transition, going from prototype production and going from the Concept 1 to the C2 production, and going from low volume production of our batteries to higher volume production. We need to change everything. The whole company is changing pretty much every year. As they say, a company changes completely once you double, and we pretty much double every year. So we have decided not to patch up our facilities anymore, but to build a long-term solution from ground up. So we are going to move our production in the next few weeks. So I wanted to capture this moment in time of the company, how it looks like before the big changes. Uh, so everything was happening basically here for the first a couple of years when we came here, and this place seemed huge to us. We thought we will never uh, fill it up. Turns out we were wrong. Uh, two years later, we were already full, and we had to modify it a lot to make it work. But let me show you how it is today. So please follow me. So here first, we have our production planning. So I'm going to show you around in the way the company is laid out. Physically, it's not like how the process would really go. So here we are developing our tooling, mostly for the carbon fiber pieces. So the guys here get the input from design and engineering in terms of surfaces of the parts you want to produce. Uh, so here, for example, we have now the C2 dashboard. Um, so he got the surfaces from the design, and now we are developing uh, the part that needs to be produced in the CNC machining to make the tool for the carbon fiber part. So in this case, it's a complex and big part, so we actually decided to make a positive. So we are going to machine this part, which looks like the actual um, part, which looks like the actual dashboard, with the dividers and different parts. We'll show you the, the tool actually later. Um, and then based on this, the machining guys will do the programming and machine the tool. So in here, uh, on the other side, we are developing the layout plan. So based on the geometry of the part, uh, Anna here is doing the layup of the different carbon fiber parts uh, of the different materials, uh, the angles of each part, uh, which is especially uh, important for the parts where that are visible carbon fiber. So uh, she gives here the direction of the plies uh, of the different layers and which materials they have to use in which sequence. Um, so they basically get the guys in the production, get the layup plan here from Anna and know then how to make the parts. So I said how the company is changing all the time. So this was actually just two and a half years ago where we now have our production planning and mold production. This was our warehouse. Uh, so our warehouse is now probably, I don't know, 20 times bigger than, than this. But just two and a half years ago, this was actually our warehouse. So the company is always changing and we are always trying to figure out how to use the space here we have in the best way. Once the tool is developed, it comes to our machining department where we first develop the chem code to machine the geometry that, of the tool. So let's see how that works. So this is the input they get from the tooling development, which is the geometry. And then um, they are developing here, in this case, a five axis uh, tooling pad in the milling machine to machine the, uh, the pattern in this case. So this is not the tool. This is the positive pattern out of which the tool is made from carbon fiber, but I'll show you that later. So basically they tell here the machine which tools to use and how to move those tools to make the part. So let's see how that looks like. So currently we are making the tooling for the C2. So this blocks, for example, will become wheel arch liner tooling for the C2, for the carbon fiber parts. So we have hundreds of different of tooling parts that have to be produced for the C2. This is just one small part of them. Hi. 
here on the other side we are making the parts that actually go in the car and in other components that we do. So I'll give you a few examples. So this is for example a gearbox housing built from a single piece of aluminum. Or here's electronic control unit housings. For example, the cooling system, part of the cooling system of the Koenigsegg battery pack. Or this is a door hinge for a C2. Or brake pedal for the C2. Or for example, bigger parts. Like this inverter housing. So this is actually the rear inverter housing for the C2. So it's a one megawatt inverter. So for two motors actually. So on both sides we have two inverters. Uh, so here we make the housing and the cooling for the inverter. And then the other parts of the inverter are made in other parts of the company and then they come together. So we have different three axis and five axis milling machines here. And we wanted to do a lot of things internally, be vertically integrated because that makes us flexible. But also because we can be very fast. So one day we can design it and the other day, if it's not a too complex part, we can already have it, depending on our priorities. Of course, this production methodology doesn't make sense for higher volume production. So as we are now ramping up our production for other car companies, we are not using any more production methodologies like this. So not more machining, but actually more sand casting, injection molding, and those kind of things. But the majority of parts we want to be able to still produce internally, especially for our own cars. We have more machining here. So here we make mostly plastic parts like for battery cooling and stuff like that. These are older machines which uh, basically made most of the parts for the first concept ones. And now they do simpler stuff like uh, plastic parts. Let's go to welding. This is where we made all the concept one chassis. So the chassis is a steel or a chrome moly welded structure, which is consisting of 300 different parts and it takes months to weld it here. And Herman, he was basically with us from day one. He welded all the chassis from the first car to the last car. Now the last car is just gone. We will see it later in other production steps. So no more concept one frames to weld. And the C2 is completely different. It's a carbon fiber monocoque, the big, biggest carbon piece in the industry. And uh, the guys are now doing different things like uh, cooling system parts, or here we have um, cooling distribution pipes. So even though the um, the C2 doesn't need a welded frame. There's still lots of work for these guys to make other parts. This is our wiring and component assembly area. These guys are also going to move in the other facility. So here we make wiring harnesses for components, like this is wiring harness for the Aston Martin battery, or wiring harness for the Koenigsegg battery, or high voltage harnesses. Um, actually, this is <laughs> just an example of how crazy we went with the Concept 1. This is the HVAC, which we built for the Concept 1. Um, so you will not see other car companies doing that, <laughs> which doesn't really make sense to do your own HVAC, but we, we couldn't fit anything else inside. This is the last Concept 1 chassis. So it came from the chassis uh, welding to here to do the wiring harness. Here we have our uh, electronics prototype production, actually PCB prototype production. So this is, for example, a control unit for the C2. So we have a bunch of these in the car to control different functions, or let's say, this is the battery management of the Concept 1, or parts of the battery management for the C2, um, parts for the lights or stuff like that, or this is power distribution unit part. So when we develop a new PCB, new control unit, or new part of the inverter or the infotainment, the first prototypes are made by these guys by hand, so they actually built the ECUs here. Once we are happy with the design and we don't have more iterations and it's going into high volume production, we give it to somebody else to do the pick and place, so to basically take the bare PCBs and put the little components, the electrical components, uh, on the PCBs. So what we are doing here, um, so for example, here we assemble the Concept 1 motor. So this is the Concept 1 motor, and over there we have the C2 motor and powertrain. Uh, Concept 1 front gearbox, like this is a machined aluminum housing, or shafts and gears, and then they become the gearbox out of these parts. So this is a front gearbox of the C1, the Concept 1, which is a single-speed gearbox in the rear we have a two-speed double clutch gearbox. Um, then we are assembling a bunch of other components like here, for example, the key. The key is quite interesting. So we have, for example, the electronics, uh, which are our own. We make every button 
uh, the leather or whatever upholstery we have in the car is the same like in the car. Um, so this is for two different cars, right? Yeah. Or yeah, for the last two cars, or actually for the last three cars. Um, and the carbon fiber parts, of course, it's also our, our own. So it's pretty much like building jewelry. This is a much bigger part, which is also made here. So the, the powertrain. So this is the rear C2 powertrain with the motor, inverter, and two-speed gearboxes in the rear. So this is the rear powertrain unit with 1,000 kilowatts or one megawatt. And this is the front powertrain unit with 400 kilowatts. So they are quite different if you look at them. So the front powertrain has the motors in the middle, the gearboxes on the sides, and then the inverter on the top. In the rear, the gearbox is in the middle. It's actually two two-speed gearboxes in there. So every, every motor has its own gearbox, but they share the housing, and every gearbox is independent two-speed gearbox. Each motor is a 500 kilowatt, 700 newton meter motor and the one megawatt inverter. So you saw this piece being machined in the machining. So all of these parts are made in the company in different parts and then assembled here. Except for example, here in this case, we have a um, sand casted housing for the gearbox while the other parts are machined. So this is the inverter with two inverters in one box basically. So the top of the, the top half is for one motor, the other half is for the other motor. What we do here is uh, power distribution units for the Königsaggregata. So here to give you an example how that looks like, but that's basically taking care of distributing the high voltage current between the battery and the other devices in the car, the inverters, the charger, the DC-DC, the heater, the air conditioning. So it has a bunch of electronics, wiring, composites, which are made around to here and then being assembled. And uh, we have a comparison here between the power distribution unit for the Concept 1 and the C2. So it's basically the same part like you saw here in the Königsegregera, but we can see how different they are, doing the same job for different cars. So the little Königsegregera power distribution unit, which, was, which is an odd shape because the engine comes here, so we had to use the space in a different way. The Concept 1 power distribution unit, which is huge, and then the C2 power distribution unit, which is handling much more power, basically 40-50% more power than the C1, but it's much more compact and much more lighter. And that's because of the progress we've made over the years. This is the shifting mechanism in the Concept 1. So as we have two gears, you can also shift them uh, manually. So all of these parts are also made here, also the mechanics, even the PCB that's uh, here on the switch. And uh, like we worked a lot, for example, to get this click of the gear shifting right. Like those details also matter, of course. The infotainment system, so this is the electronics, the hardware of the infotainment system. The hardware and software we also do here. I will show you later in the engineering, the guys that make it actually, or design it. And then also some other parts, like we really go to extremes. So when you make a car, a supercar especially, you have basically two choices when it comes to lights. You either use something off the shelf, so then you basically use the same parts that you can find on a bus or on a train or a tractor, which is also fine. Some small manufacturers do that. We wanted to have our own lights, so when you go to light suppliers and ask them for a quotation, it's like millions, like five, six millions to develop and make a light. We couldn't do that. We didn't have the money to do that, so we had to develop our own lights. So the light itself is, is developed and designed by us, um, and all the like this is, for example, the control unit of the light or the PCBs with the LEDs that are behind these light guides. So this is the uh, daytime running light or the blinker light, which is also the PCBs we actually make here. So these are just a few examples of the stuff we do here. And as you can see, this is like prototype assembly. So the guys are sitting on their tables. They get the parts from other parts of the company or some off the shelf parts like connectors or relays or fuses. That's of course bought, that's not made here. And then we assemble them here on the tables, but it's, that's fine for prototype assembly and for small volume production, like for example, for Koenigsegg or for Aston Martin. But as we are going into higher volume, this completely changes. So this is one of the departments that will shift to the new facility in the next few weeks. And there we will already start with the first production lines and trying to do things on a more industrial scale in a more industrial way. So moving from prototype production to serious production. And that's the big step for the company. So we are at the same time building the last Concept 1s and building the C2 prototypes. So the Koenigsegg Regera, Aston Martin, Valkyrie, 
the Pininfarina Battista, Rimac C2, and Mercedes Project 1. Out of those five cars, four have our batteries and other parts.